Utah State, a 27 and a half point favorite over UConn, who I just saw their defensive coordinator has mysteriously disappeared without explanation, will remain on the payroll, and they might not get another defensive coordinator this year. It might be defensive coordinator by, uh, you know, teamwork and friendship. So what do you guys think? I'll, I'll start here. Um, the nutmeg state of Connecticut uh, has had many travails in the football program recently. Um, you're often asked which new coach has the toughest road to hoe. It is Jim Mora, and it ain't close. Uh, football is not terribly important in the state as a whole, though it has produced some, some quality players. Uh, for sure, some star players. And the state of the program is one that is floundering there. So you have the Aggies who have a lot of players back and they won 11 games. They've got Alabama next week, warm up. I'm going to, I'm going to lay it and laugh, man. I mean, I know that's a bunch of points, but I, I'm going to, I'm going to, what did you say it was? 27? 27 and a hook. 27 and a hook. I'd, I'd probably lay 35. I'll, I'll, I'll take Utah <laughs> state and lay it. Bill, you want to go and we can just switch uh, the order up from, from uh, this point sure. So yes, I agree with the, all the logic that was just laid out there. Uh, I've also been yelled at all off season by Utah state fans for how much my numbers uh, don't didn't like them last year and still don't think they're the best team in the mountain West. Um, they had that kind of, won a close a bunch of close games but you know since we won the conference we're now the best team in the conference and we will be forever and ever kind of thing um so i it, that number to me that 27 or so number includes kind of probably a little inflation on the utah state side um it includes yukon probably well, never say probably in this case. In theory, probably not going to ever be worse than they've been the last couple of years. I realize that you know it could happen, but you know, just a little bit of change there probably makes things better. Uh, my numbers are more like Utah State by twenty five and a half. Uh, we we're talking about making picks that we hate. I, I love being able to say I've I've got stakes on picking UConn, but we're going to go <laughs> UConn just to. Uh, just to make things a little different here, something in the neighborhood of like a 42 to 17 kind of deal. It'll be close to the spread, but we're going to, we're going to go under. Well, one of the unfortunate parts for you guys of inviting me on this podcast is I can drag you down some rabbit holes and I have a uh, feature on UConn football running this week. I live in Boston. I went down to Bristol and stopped by and saw coach Mora while uh, on one of those trips. And the most fascinating number to me, and this speaks to Bill's, uh, unpredictability of college football. Now they have 40 new players out of their <laughs> 82 scholarship players. Now that literally was not legal to happen two years ago in college football. So there will be some sort of talent upgrade there. Um, and again, I, I've been to a lot of schools and a lot of Springs over the years. I call it new car scent. There is some new car scent at UConn, you know, Jim Mora back at it. He actually lives in a haunted house. There's your fun fact. He lives in a house on campus that they believe to be haunted. Um, <laughs> All that said, I believe UConn will be better, but I would sit there with a pit in my stomach, like praying they cover the 27 and a half um, with steak online. I am going to bet against UConn until UConn gives me a reason to not bet against them. And maybe some of that's bias. I, I can't break down for you. Uh, they're going to start the, the transfer from Penn State uh, very likely in, the, in their opener. So they'll have a little sizzle and a little movement at quarterback. They will be better, but... I just think that is a hard opener for them. I am going to take Logan Bonner. I, I mean, Utah State returns, what, 11, 12 starters, Bill, something like that? Yeah, not a ton. Um, I mean, they did lose yeah. quite a few uh, yeah, solid they've, players. They've yeah. got, I think, seven on offense, five on defense. Um, yeah. But yeah. Bonner's back. It's a big deal. So. I am uh, I am not counting on UConn until they give me a reason to count on them. And I, that's, that statement could go on in per perpetuity, but they have just been – remember their opener last year? And, again, it's very different – I want to stress, it's a very different team. It's a very different roster. Like, there's always one game opening weekend that's like a three-touchdown spread where somebody wins. Oh, and yeah. Like, yeah. And you're going to you're gonna see one of those. I'm just not throwing my hat in the ring on the old Huskies here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, and speaking of transfers, uh, Utah State's added, you know, some power five receivers, added yep. a defensive back from Miami. So they've, uh, they've, they've upgraded the talent too. So that's just probably more than, that's probably more than anyone will talk about UConn this entire season. You just haven't lived until you've put money on UConn or UMass. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.